Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me. I hope anyone that's celebrating enjoyed Christmas and I wish in all our subscribers the best for the new year. Big respect and shout out to rappers like Stardom and Fecky as well. These guys spent Christmas giving things away to the people that needed it most. Stardom gave away clothes and presents to children at a mother and baby unit in Birmingham and Fecky went all around the country giving away turkeys. So respect where it's due. We've got a lot of news to get through and a lot of news to catch up on. We're going to start up north and work our way down. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Manchester news and what's been going on in Manchester since Christmas Day. A very important story and a story that's got my attention yesterday was a story about in Moston, Manchester, a gunman opened fire twice on Christmas Day while children were eating Christmas dinner inside their house. And when I say twice, I mean two separate attacks. The property in Moston was attacked at 1am on Christmas morning and again at 5pm. The house was shot twice in two separate incidents and the children were having dinner at the time of the second one. The shocking attack took place at a property on Chalston Avenue in Moston and police said it was a targeted attack at around 1am and again at 5 During the first shooting, two adults aged in their 50s and two teenagers, 17 and 14, were inside, police said. At the time of the second shooting, there were two more adults also present who were 40 and 35 years old and a young child. No one was injured and detectives are describing it as an isolated incident with no further risk to the public. It's hard to be isolated when it's happened more than once. They say no arrests have been made and the investigation is ongoing. Inspector Stuart Woodhead of GMP, this is the police division that had not reported 100,000 crimes last year and the chief of police has just been sacked as well. This was an extremely frightening and shocking incident for all involved. At the time of the second discharge, they were enjoying Christmas dinner. They said they'd like to reassure the community they are treating it very serious and are doing all they can to protect residents and investigate the incident. Additional high visibility police are in the area for the coming days, they said, but surely they should have been there after the first one. How was someone so comfortable to come back after a first shooting? The second time, I can honestly say I've never heard about this in all of the time I've been doing this. To come back to the scene of a crime, especially a shooting, is unheard of. It just doesn't happen. There's always police there. There'd be police at the address for the rest of the evening. But in this case, that just didn't happen. And I think this really does reflect on the way that Manchester police investigate their cases. And we're definitely going to talk more about that in relation to the sacking of the chief of police. In relation to the resignation, I did say sacked, but he technically resigned. But that's just like one level down from being sacked. The Chief Constable Ian Hopkins has resigned after the force was placed into special measures. Greater Manchester Mayor Andy Burnham has announced Mr Hopkins will step down with immediate effect. It comes after the force was placed on Thursday into special measures because of concerns with a failure to record more than 80,000 crimes in one year. The Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary and Fire and Rescue services said in a report that he was deeply troubled by the fact that cases handled by the police were closed without proper investigation so to be honest if somebody had just shot up a house and then no police are there for them to shoot it up three hours later for me i'd say that was a lack of investigation and also protecting the victims there were clearly they said a targeted attack so they knew these children were at risk of being targeted again nothing was put in place in order to protect them so I really want to hear people's opinions on the sacking of the Chief Constable, or the resignation, sorry, of the Chief Constable of Manchester Police. In relation to another story from Manchester, this is about guns, it's about where the firearms come from that get used in the properties that you've just seen in the story before. Four men have been jailed in relation to a seizure of an arsenal of weapons that included an assault rifle. They were found in a hidden safe above a takeaway, police said. Michael Davies, 54, was arrested by police when they raided his premises on Victoria Avenue in Blackley in September last year. Hidden in a black holdall in a suitcase were seven firearms, 145 rounds of ammunition and Class A drugs with a street value of 38 grand. All the guns were forensically tested and deemed to be in working order and also contained live rounds. 
Several of them were linked to shootings in Greater Manchester, a shooting in December 2015, when shots were fired at a house belonging to a doctor and his family. In that incident, the gunman had got the wrong address. Three brothers, Safiya Ali, Katia Ali and Kwabia Ali, have been jailed for their roles in this gang. Safiya Ali was jailed for nine years and six months for conspiracy to possess a firearm and ammunition and his two brothers, Kabir and Katia, were jailed for supplying drugs. Kabir was sentenced to six years and Katia to four and a half and Michael Davis was sentenced even after he fled to Spain following his arrest for possession of firearms and ammunition. Prosecution told the court that Davis from Rochdale was working as a delivery driver for Perfect Pizza and he moved into the flat above the property to help the occupants pay rent back in 2017. He renovated the flat and changed the locks. He had the keys to all the doors in the flat. On September the 15th, 2017, a search warrant was executed by the police. Following an entry into his single bedroom flat, a search was undertaken and they found the suitcase containing firearms. When they unzipped it, they found a Czech model 7.26mm assault rifle, a Turkish attack arms Zaraki model 914 9mm semi-automatic weapon, a Smith & Wesson model 38 revolver, and also a Ruger and a Magnum was also found. The 145 rounds of ammunition were suitable to be shot in the firearms, they said, and the court was told about the incidents that the guns had been used in, and they were connected to organised crime. The Czech model 7.62mm was linked to a shooting back in 2015, and the unknown offenders pulled up at a vehicle at an address in Lytham Road, and the bullets penetrated the living room window and front door. The occupant of the address was an innocent person and this happened over the Christmas period. So coincidentally, like this case, it's not related to this case, but similar to it, it happened around the Christmas time. They say this is targeted. There are examples of mistaken identity as well. The offenders discharged the handgun into the front door of the property also. It is believed the offenders targeted the correct address on the second shooting that was connected to these firearms. They said the address at Perfect Pizza, the flat above it, was a safe house that was used to store drugs, ammunition and firearms. And on September the 7th, 2017, they found, that's when they connected them all, they found a meeting between Davies and the brothers. There was contact between them on the day before they went to Perfect Pizza and took all the guns in a taxi. Just before 8pm, CCTV showed a Mercedes taxi arriving outside the building and Sophia Ali getting out and approaching Davies before they all went into the property with a hold on. David's defence lawyer said that he wasn't as criminally minded as the brothers and he was just working for them. But the judge pointed out that these guns could not have been used for anything other than gang related activity. So I thought there were some really interesting stories and definitely connected due to gun crime. In the final story of this episode and breaking news that has come from Manchester last night in the Stockport area around 9.30, a 15 year old boy is in hospital in a critical condition after being hit by a police car that was responding to an incident. Greater Manchester Police said there was reports of a domestic disturbance when the tragic incident took place. The collision happened on Garner's Lane and the police stopped at the scene and administered first aid until an ambulance arrived. The boy was taken to hospital with, with a serious head injury where he remains in a critical condition. An investigation is underway and an incident has been referred to the internal watchdog. Pictures from the scene show the damaged police car on the pavement near a tree and a police officer examining items of clothing in the road. Garner's Lane was closed near to Eccleston Road and a spokesman for the police said it's on the 26th of December officers were responding to the incident when they hit a pedestrian on Garner's Lane in Stockport. Police stopped and, and helped as much as they can but the boy is in a critical condition in hospital. So this is a breaking news story and there's very little other information about it but we definitely keep you updated on the condition of that young boy and any ongoing investigations in relation to it. So really appreciate you joining me for this episode. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news, more local. I really appreciate all your thoughts and opinions on these stories. Thank you. Peace.